Without any shadow of a doubt, we love movies. Big movie releases gross hundreds of millions of dollars and the names of actors and directors are considered common knowledge. But while we certainly love films, many of us overlook one of the most important elements in all of film history, the film itself. It's a medium that's been around for well over a century, and while these strips of celluloid contain some of the most well-known images in all of human history, most of us are in the dark when it comes to film. So this begs the question, what is film? Well, let's break it down and look at its different components. These little cutouts, called perforations, run along the edge of the strip. They provide the camera a way to move the film around easily and accurately to keep an even spacing between images. Some film contains a strip for recording audio from the camera. This is either a magnetic strip or an optical waveform. It's worth noting, though, that when filming motion pictures, audio is recorded to a separate device. Frames are the rectangles that contain the image. And just like how megapixels determine the size of a digital image, the size of these frames impacts how big the image can be printed or projected before it'll lose quality. So the frames, perforations, and audio strips are often rearranged to make space for a bigger image. Super 8 film, in comparison to standard 8mm film, for example, shrinks the perforations on the edge to make space for a larger image across the width of the stock. But there's also the tried-and-true, just-make-it-bigger approach to film stocks. 16mm is the next size up, with standard 16 and super 16 being the popular formats, although both are actually shot on the same single per film. 35mm is probably the most notable film. It's the standard for Hollywood as well as the size of the film in those little canisters that you'd buy for still photography. But while the size is the same, they're both different formats. 70mm film is the largest available film stock for the biggest of the big screens. You'll note that this IMAX 70mm film runs horizontally rather than vertically, because turning the frame sideways is a more efficient layout than vertical, meaning the extra space can be spent on making the frames even larger. Now while there are many different sizes and configurations of film, modern film stock all works the same way. The film itself is composed of several different layers of filters, barriers, and light-sensitive emulsions, but I'm going to boil it down to just its two main parts. The key to what makes film work is a light-sensitive coating on the film composed of tiny little grains of silver halide. When struck by light, these grains change from one state to another. When developing film that's been exposed in a camera, a chemical bath removes only the grains that have been changed by interaction with light. And the more grains that get removed from an area, the whiter that area will become. And the more grains that get left behind, the darker that part of the image will be. Now this is fine for plain old black and white film, but to record color we'll need three of these light sensitive layers. Each of these layers will be sensitized to only react with light of a single color. So we'll need one blue, one green, and one red layer, all stacked together in that order. Just like you can mix primary colors of paints together to make other colors, red, green, and blue are the primary colors for light as seen by the cones in the human eye. Now since we have separate recordings of the red, green, and blue information, we can recombine these to get the full color image. This is a really cool topic by itself, but I didn't have time to go into much detail, so if you want to learn more about how your kindergarten teacher lied to you about what primary colors are, or why film negatives are such weird colors, go check out the bonus video. These emulsion layers, as well as some additional filters and barriers, are all sandwiched together in a flexible, transparent material. In the early days, this was a nitro celluloid, but this proved to be... explosive. I mean, it's literally chemically related to gun cotton, an early military-grade explosive. This made the safer acetate celluloid films a much welcome creation, although with the silver halide, it still technically is flammable. Acetate-based film stocks were around for a good portion of the century before film manufacturers began to favor polyester plastic as a base, starting in the 1990s. And there you have it. All these components working together create the height of image capturing technology of the 20th century. And while other technologies of its era have either been upgraded or replaced by newer technologies, film has survived relatively unchanged. And even more impressively, while more and more movies are being produced with digital cameras, Film is still here, and for the time being, a viable alternative to the best digital cameras we have available today. But film is going away. Don't be sad though, digital is a worthy successor, and it may very well go on to build a legacy as lasting as film. But while all the tools may soon be going digital, the people who use them will still be film makers. <laughs>